How's it going, my fellow horror fans? Well, as the countdown to Halloween 2018 closes, my last commentary will be on Halloween Resurrection, the last film in the original Halloween series, not counting Halloween 2018, which ignores all the sequels. And uh, just so you guys know, when this commentary goes live, I will actually already be in uh, a screening for Halloween 2018 because I have advanced tickets for Thursday night, which is when this is going to be uh, going up. Alright, I'm going to start the movie in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. One positive note I'll say about Resurrection right off the bat is it does have a good score. That's one thing I'll definitely say about Resurrection. It has a really good score. I like it. Yeah, I will say this. I think Rick Rosenthal, you know, he tried to make a good film, but I heard behind the scenes they were changing the script on him every five minutes. Like, honestly, like, I'm amazed he didn't walk away from this project. I don't think anybody would have blamed him in the end because, you know, like, he tried, he really did, but I will say this. Any director, if they have a bad script, there's only so much they can do with it. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, if you have a lousy script, I mean, what can you do? This is definitely one of the stronger themes uh, after uh, 1, 2, and 4. I do like this opening here with uh, Jane Lee Curtis's com um, narrating it. Yeah, this is creepy. Seeing all those mental patients. She's in 6L. Yeah, a uh, piece of trivia, that doll in the bed, apparently she basically had the same doll in the original film. I never knew that. I guess I just never noticed. Yep, there's Lori. Yeah, you can tell she looks rough. I will say this, I do like this opening, minus the, the BS explanation on how Michael managed to get away from um, his fate in H2O, but... This opening feels like it belongs to a film we never got, but I'll discuss that more later. I will say though, there is some good cinematography here. Grace Anderson Sanitarium. Psychiatric Care Facility. Yeah, some people used to think this was Smith Grove, it's like, nope. Yeah, this entire scene's BS. There's no way the paramedic would be allowed to examine Michael alone. Yeah, apparently this scene actually was filmed at the end of H2O, and it does seem like it was. It was done for an extra day of filming. It was a secret uh, piece of film that they were preparing for the next film.
That part, though, is definitely new, because it's not even the same mask. Again, though, it's like there's no way Michael could walk away with uh, the knife. Yeah, like I said, this explanation is garbage. I mean, maybe I could buy... After Michael was already in the transport van that he could just somehow pull a switch, but... Again... Michael breaking the guy's larynx, that does not mean he would not have a pulse. Like I said, for Michael to pull off uh, the fact that it wasn't him, he would have had to stab the guy in multiple places where he was stabbed. Essentially kill him, because he would have to. He'd have to have no pulse, otherwise they would have realized it wasn't, uh, the guy wasn't dead. I will say, though, uh, even though Lori looks really, like, uh, Jane Lee Curtis, like, she looks really rough. And, you know, her character, like, really looks tired, but she has put on a good performance. I know Lori didn't, I know Jane Lee Curtis did not want to do this film, and she got three million for it, which is at least good, but... Like, you know, if they were going to do a sequel, like, you know, if they said, you know, like, okay, we're going to do one more, maybe I could have bought that explanation if Lori was in the entire film, I could be like, okay, it sucks that she killed somebody, but, you know, granted, if I was going to do a sequel where I pretend H2O's ending didn't quite happen, I would have told it differently, and I would have made sure Lori didn't actually kill anybody. Like, honestly, I think it would have been good if we, yeah, that's a great shot. I honestly, though, if they had done a sequel where it was a true follow-up to H2O, like, I would have liked it to where maybe Michael either stalks Laurie throughout the entire movie in the sanitarium. That could have been interesting. I know that would be, like, a repeat of Halloween too, but you know what? I would have taken that. Or, like, uh, you know, like, you think uh, uh, Laurie dies here in the sanitarium, and then, you know, Michael goes after uh, uh, John and Molly. I think that's a story you could have had, and maybe at the end of the film it's revealed that Laurie's still alive, like... Like I said, the problem with this opening is, it is a good opening despite the BS explanation of how Michael got away, but this feels like it's for a film we never got. It's like, this entire opening, like, honestly, if I was to redo Resurrection, like, or re- sorry, re-edit Resurrection, I would take the entire opening out, just so I could keep Lori alive, and not, like, uh, slap the, uh, the audience in the face for, uh, the BS explanation on how Michael escaped. Because, like, I would say, okay, Michael died in H2O, but this is a new standalone Michael Myers story. Yeah, I always found this character funny. That's a creepy shot of Michael. I mean, in a lot of ways, a lot of the cinematography here in the opening feels like a lot of the stuff you would have seen in Halloween 2. That's not him in the basement. And unfortunately, that's not him in the basement. Like, this is a good opening, but for a lot of the wrong reasons. Like, if we would have gotten the rest of the film where Michael's trying to kill uh, John and Molly, like, okay, maybe. Though, honestly, uh, okay, I remember, honestly, if I had made this film, I probably would have been like, uh, okay, Lori did kill Michael, but maybe some medical students sewed his head back on and then he got hit by lightning or something. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but you know what, I think audiences would have bought it. And then he came back to life and killed the medical students, and then... You know, it's like, uh... Goes after Lori or something? Uh-oh. Yeah, I've seen extended sequences in the work print version for this, including an alternate death. Though, some of the stuff they did during the reshoots... Because this was originally going to come out in 2001, but then they did reshoots. Some of the reshoots made the film stronger, but some didn't. Because uh, this guard right here, originally uh, Michael was going to stab him a couple times, but uh, obviously we know in this cut it's not the same. I'll discuss that more in a second. Yeah. 
You see Michael's feet. It's like something's in that dryer. I'd be long gone. Okay, yeah. Here he stabs him and then slices his neck. But originally, um, Michael was gonna stab him a couple times and you'd only see, like, one stab. The rest would be off screen. Well, you'd see, like, the shadows of it. I will say, the mask in, H in uh, Resurrection is definitely an improvement, though. There's some scenes where the mask kind of looks weird. Though I will say, uh, the guy playing Michael here, he does a much better job. Like, he has the right build, and his walk, apparently he really tried to copy, um, Nick Castle's walk, and it does show. Yeah, again, I really like the score in Resurrection. It's definitely one of the better scores. Like, honestly, this might be the best score since, uh, Halloween 4. That was intense. I will say that. Every time I go bust through a door, it's pretty uh, awesome. Nice one, Lori. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis even said she could run faster than this, but, you know, they didn't want her to get too far ahead of Michael. I mean, I will say one thing. Lori definitely went down fighting, but still... Run, Lori, run. <laughs> Michael's like, what the? It's like, no, she didn't jump. It's like, no, I don't get my kill. You know, I gotta say, I don't think Lori would have done that, not until after she already had him in the trap, because that was risky. I mean, I will say, Lori still gives her a great performance, like, you know, she's tired, you can tell, but, like, Jane Lee Curtis still does give a very solid performance here, but, you know, it's like her character, like, you know, you can tell she's tired, she's exhausted. But at the same time, like, you know, it is interesting to see such a different version of Lori here, you know, like, she's definitely, she's damaged emotionally, you know, knowing that she killed somebody that wasn't Michael, granted, though, that is a BS excuse. Though apparently originally she was just going to commit suicide at the beginning of the movie or something. And I am glad they didn't do that. Yeah, I mean, I get it here. I get why Lori would hesitate because, you know, she doesn't want to kill another person. But the facts are, this guy's got to be Michael. He just busted through a door. He's been trying to, he's chasing you down trying to kill you. He's definitely killed somebody else. No, you don't. It's like, send him to his death. Go check on the ground. It's like, that's definitely Michael.
Damn. I mean, I'll say the music cues here are really good, but no. This is definitely not a worthwhile death for Lori. It's definitely disrespectful. I mean, like I said, if I was to re-edit the movie, I would completely take Lori out of it. I'd just be like, nope, she won in H2O. You can tell, though, when the way they did this death, they were trying to leave uh, room open to uh, potentially bring her back because um, originally she was supposed to land on concrete, but here they changed it to trees and grass. Like, you know, they were leaving it open, you know, they're trying to say maybe she could survive the drop. You know, the tree, going through the tree branches might slow her down. She hits grass instead of concrete. And even Malika Kat, uh, Malika Kod said, he was like, Ori, we don't have to kill you, we can say you survived the drop. She was like, at the time though, it's like, Malik, this is my fourth movie, I'm done. I mean, like I said, it's not a worthwhile ending for this character. It'd be one thing if it was only a temporary death. And, you know, like, she survives the fall, and then you, but maybe you don't find out till the end of the film. You know, like, the rest of the film is Michael fighting, like, uh, J John and Molly. I think that would have been a much better movie. I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they couldn't get the actors back, or they just decided to try something different. I always found this guy creepy. Now he killed more than that. Now he only killed two. Yeah, I will say, though, uh, he does a good job with his walk. I'm trying to remember who the guy is. Yeah, I would have started the movie right here. You know, I would have had the Halloween Resurrection logo, and then just start the movie here. That's it. Worry would be completely taken out of my cut. Oh yeah, right there, that guy, the professor, that's actually uh, Rick Rosenthal. But yeah, in my cut of the film, I would take everything before uh, this point out of the movie, just so this could be a standalone Halloween film with Michael Myers. That way, Lori won in H2O. I think that would have been the better choice. It's like, okay, you want Michael back? Here you go. Like, I so wish they had done that. Yeah, I like Sarah. She's definitely the best character uh, in the film at this point. Onward. Yeah, I think she's played by uh, Bianca uh, K Kaya Ditch or K uh, Kajichi. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I probably butchered her name. Yeah, I've actually met uh, Katie Sackhoff. She's really nice to talk to. Yeah, I can't remember who plays Michael Myers, guys. Sorry. Uh, I think it's, um... Uh, the name's off the top of my head. I can't think of it.
Yeah, guys, I can't think of the Michael My the guy that's playing Michael Myers here. I think it's... I don't want to say the name in case I'm wrong. I'll wait till the end credits and then uh, double check. Yeah. This guy, you know, it's like... They kind of are making fun of Michael here in a way. It's like, you know, he's supposed to be creepy, but... I don't know. I would have cut this guy out. You know, it's like, you try and make the scene creepy, and then that guy does that. I would've cut that out. Yeah, apparently there was a scene cut out that you can see in some trailers where, uh... Michael was supposed to come out of a bathtub and scare Sarah, who was, uh, just took a shower or something, and it was actually gonna be Rudy in a Michael Myers costume. You can see a little bit in certain trailers, and, uh... I kind of wish we could have seen that scene on the deleted scenes. It's like, looking at these old interfaces, it's like, uh, it's so bizarre today. It's like, and I had a computer back then. Well, my mother did, but I was using it too, but... Yeah, apparently there was going to be scenes um, where Michael would follow Sarah around in uh, the red car. But um, since they cut out scenes where Michael gets the uh, the red car, uh, the uh, the Firebird or whatever, um, all those scenes were cut out. I don't know what I feel about the music right here. Yeah, it sucks that these characters are not so well written, like, you know, if they could have actually taken the time to make these characters interesting. It's like, you know, they're trying to make these characters funny, but... At the same time, you know, it's like, unfortunately, a lot of these characters are one-dimensional. <laughs> it's like, even, um... Yeah, even these guys are like, oh yeah, this guy, this guy's weird. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Bianca, when she, uh, who plays Sarah, when she screams, she actually can't scream in real life. So they had to dub it over. Yeah, Freddy. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind the character Freddy. He's funny, but it's just there are scenes in the movie where they disrespect Michael Myers with his character, and uh, there might be funny scenes, but they definitely should not have been in the film.
No, it sucks that the others are not like you, because then the cast would actually be better. In real life, she did. Yeah, just patting yourself on the back, it's like... <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I don't hate the character of Freddy, it's just... Certain scenes with him and Michael is just, no. Yeah, I like the fact here we get to see like the Halloween season, you get to see all these pumpkins. Yeah, they actually shot this uh, in Vancouver. It's like the... I think it's the only film that's ever been shot in Canada. Hey, yeah, you guys see that red car across the street? Um, there is an extended sequence in the work print where Michael would drive uh, away with that car, but um, like I said, because uh, they cut out all the footage of how Michael got the car and how he pulls up to the Myers house, they couldn't keep any of it in. Granted, though, the scene where Michael got the car was really weird. It's like he actually came across a couple where, uh, let's just say the girl was giving the guy some um, head, and Michael was, like, all confused, but then he stole the car. Yeah, it was a really weird scene. I was just like, okay, I'm glad they took that out of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, this uh, uh, actor from uh, the show The Pretender. Really liked him in there. I wish a lot of these characters were written better. It would have made the movie better as a result. But like I said, you really did not have to have the scene with Laurie at the beginning. They could have just made this a standalone, and honestly, I think audiences would have liked it better. Yeah, believe it or not, in like 2002, these are like the best portable mini cameras they could get. I mean, the concept of a bunch of kids exploring Michael Myers' house is not a bad idea. It's just the execution's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, um... I've actually seen an extended sequence here where um, they actually bring a bunch of equipment into the garage. And they're like, oh, I gotta get, uh, I think, the, the Queen's uh, espresso machine or something. Yeah, there was an extended sequence where um, I, you would see Michael's shadow in one of the cameras or something. I don't know why they cut it out. Yeah, they actually rebuilt the original Myers house on a soundstage, and they, I'd say they did a pretty good job. Except, uh, apparently the upstairs is just a false upstairs, it's not actually the, uh, actual upstairs. I guess, uh, they didn't have, I guess they didn't have enough space to, uh, build a full upstairs for some reason. Yeah, Tyra Banks, you know, her character, it's like... Not really much point in her being in the movie, you really didn't need her. It's like, 
I know the actress is a good actress, but you really, she doesn't do anything here. She's kind of wasted. Ah, oh, there's Michael. Uh-oh. Oh, Charlie. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, that's not a person you want to make friends with. Yeah, they try and be creative here with some of the camera angles, but... I don't know. I do think it's a good kill. Yeah, the mask looks kind of weird there. Like, you see some sort of, like, almost like, uh... Makeup on it. Like, there's some scenes where the mask does look weird. That wasn't Charlie. Yeah, that car being taken away. Michael was supposed to drive up to the house in it originally, but... Granted, all that's cut out, so... I guess we, in this version, we have no clue uh, if the, the car actually had an important uh, part of the film. I wish they were like... Uh, I like to see all the cut footage for Resurrection, but not everything's... But everything's never been released. Like I said, I've seen a work print where we see a lot of the axe stuff, but... There's still stuff that has never been released. Eh, see Michael in the window. Yeah, I know Rick Rosenthal said he wanted to, uh, he would have loved to have, uh, done, um, a special feature where they would go back and take all of the footage from the, uh, uh head cams and, like, uh, s separate them into individual sections so you could get to see each character wandering around the house by themselves until they run in, until they, uh, run into Michael. I think that would be interesting, like, I've seen the webcam featurette on, uh, the DVD and I think it's here on the Blu-ray too. Like, it would have been an interesting uh, thing to see, like, you know, each character wandering around the Myers house until they run into Michael, but never has been released. Probably would cost too much. I mean, these are some interesting camera angles. I mean, like I said, the concept for this film is not bad. It's just, in a lot of ways, the stigma of Rory's death at the beginning definitely hurts this film. So if this was just a standalone Michael Myers film, this would be better. Yeah, that's the thing. These characters are so one-dimensional. It's like, Rudy is just about food. Though I do wonder if he, um, maybe was, uh, possibly had a crush on Sarah, and maybe Sarah was vice versa. Yeah, this guy, he's just like, he just wants, uh, he just wants Donna. And, uh, Bill, he just wants, um, Jen. And Jen, she just wants to be famous.
Yeah, that would be weird. It's like. <laughs> That is a big knife. Busted. <laughs> Give it up. She's never gonna get in bed with you. <laughs> that is creepy. Yeah, unfortunately they didn't realize uh, Michael's right there. There is definitely some creepy shots, like I'd say the cinematography is pretty good in Resurrection. Now that's one party I'd like to be at. <laughs> I definitely would be having fun at that party. <laughs> oh, Deckard sees electronics. <laughs> God, I remember like around, especially around like the 2000s and all that. Like monitors like these would have cost a fortune. the music right here this is a good theme and I like the fact that these kids uh, bring this pumpkin to the Myers house yeah that's a good scene Yeah, that's a good shot of Michael there in the darkness. Yeah, but I definitely say Resurrection definitely has one of the stronger scores after 1, 2, and 4. Like, it's definitely like, that's one thing they did a good job on was like the score. to separate yeah like I said apparently that upstairs is actually um, it's a false upstairs because uh, I guess they couldn't build it on the same sound stage for maybe uh, I guess they didn't have enough space 
to uh, build the upstairs because apparently when you see it from uh, downstairs it's um, not actually the the right height though they did a pretty good job like making it a seamless transition you really can't tell I mean I will say one thing they did a good job with the set <laughs> that's the problem with these characters it's like you know they're funny but you know like i said these are not the worst characters in any f movie but it's just like he's just so one-dimensional it's like he just wants her granted though, i will make he sack off is gorgeous so i guess that i've met her in real life really nice person to talk to though i will say like her acting here is not the greatest but granted it's just because of the script you don't need to do so much. Like I said, obviously, like, I've seen her in much better stuff. And then, of course, Michael. <laughs> He's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, originally in the work print, um, you wouldn't actually see her uh, bra. She didn't go that high. And she was just like, maybe next time. <laughs> Guess they just inserted that later. Probably during the reshoots. Yeah, it's funny. Jason X and Halloween Resurrection were made in uh, Vancouver. Granted, though, so was uh, some scenes in um, Friday the Thirteenth uh, Part Eight: Jason Takes Manhattan. And oh yeah, Freddy vs. Jason was also made in Vancouver. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the character Donna, you know, they try and give her some good stuff, but... At the same time, she's kind of one-dimensional herself. It's like, you know, she's just like... She's acting like she would never sleep with this guy, and then, of course, she actually gets it on with him in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know something I noticed though um there's a way out right there. That's an else you could have gone up those stairs and got out like when Sarah, anybody that's being chased by Michael in the basement could have escaped. Yep, there's Michael. Surprise! I mean, I will say, there is some good cinematography for sure in Resurrection. That's one thing they got done, right? Yeah, there's an editing, editing mistake right there. Um, that guy in the, uh, we just saw that had like a, a red costume on. He actually doesn't come in that room till later. 
<laughs> oh, Jen, Jen, Jen. In a way you will, but not the way you want. Yeah, I like that kill. But originally, um, he was supposed to turn around and Michael would be there. And he would kill him there, but they changed it to uh, Michael uh, smashing through the mirror. And I honestly think it's the, the better choice. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, somebody's gonna make sure uh, your thing's gonna end pretty disastrously. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you know, I always wonder, I think this character Sarah and uh, Rudy might have had a thing for each other, but it just never happened. Yep, there's Michael. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, I think that's a homage to uh, the original Halloween right there with the uh, closet. <laughs> Poor Sarah. <laughs> yeah, see, this guy, this is when he's supposed to come in. They made an editing mistake. I guess they changed the sequence around and they didn't catch it. I admit, I would be enjoying that party, but I probably would be watching that show once they started uh, putting it on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she turns him down at first, but then she's actually willing to kiss him. It's like, I don't get it. I admit, I wouldn't keep I wouldn't make her wait. <laughs> yeah, that's morbid stuff. Good question, Rudy. He'll scare you, all right, but um, he's kind of not a willing participant. <laughs> he's like, ah. Watching Donna. Imagine that, like, you found, like, a sub-basement in your house.
<laughs> yeah, I almost wish they'd make like a how uh, Michael Myers house, but uh, like turn it into like some sort of ride or haunted house. Or I know I got it. Like you know, you go into like a Myers house for a night and you try and survive Michael Myers all night. I think that would be cool. It's like her character to try and give her a little bit of like a uh, character development. Like, you know, like she actually has some brains, but then of course she's ro rolling to sleep with him right now. <laughs> it's like, yep, ditch the camera. Then of course she tosses her camera in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody be glued to that screen then. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Surprise! Imagine as like you're seeing all these bodies, it's like ah! <laughs> yeah, I can wonder what audiences are like. Did they feel cheated because they didn't get the, uh, you know, uh, what they wanted to see, or did they like the uh, the jump scare? <laughs> God, talk about uh, killing the mood for sure. <laughs> then it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, okay, this scene right here is definitely a problematic. It's like, it's a funny scene, but it insult it, this scene insults Michael Myers. That's what this scene unfortunately does. Like, I heard test audiences like this scene, but, and I don't hate this scene. I find it funny, but it's definitely something that should not be in the film. Like, you know, you're thinking at first, is this Michael? But then, uh, just wait for it. Then you suddenly see a second one, and you're just like, what? You know, it's like, I think at first you're thinking, like, what, is Michael having, like, memories of walking around the house or something? But, uh, then, of course, uh, you see, uh, you're just waiting for it. Yeah, you see on the camera, it's like, oh, wait, there's two of them. Michael's like, what the? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Michael's like, what? Michael's like so confused. <laughs>
Michael's like, okay. I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, you know, you're insulting Michael Myers by doing that. Like, I admit, the scene, I would not have put the scene in the film. At the same time, though, he just got, uh... He just got Nora killed. <laughs> yeah, there is actually a scene where Michael does kill Nora, but it was uh, cut out of the film, but you can see it in the work print. I guess they decided, like, they wanted to have one of the kills off-screen for some reason. Then, of course, Donna sees something. And unfortunately, he's already gone. Yeah, I guess uh, their false uh, thing must have weakened the wall. Yeah, that entire sewer is actually fake. They actually built it for the set, and they did a great job, because that looks real. I mean, I'll get that one thing. The arts department did a great job. I think all the bricks are made out of, like, foam. But it looks really good. Like, I'll give them that. Like, it's a great-looking set. Very creepy. Heh, <laughs> rat. Nope. Yeah, this pretty much would be the time when uh, Michael's killing Nora above, because she's singing on the monitors, and Michael comes in and strangles her, like he, he picks her up with some uh, wire, and uh, then he like stabs her. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Creepy. Like I said, if you took away the entire beginning with Laurie Strode, this movie would be better. It really would. I mean, it's still got a lot of problems, but... Not a prop. Though, that I'm like, really? <laughs> Like, wait for it. Surprise! Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, that'd be terrifying. Yeah, originally, uh, Donald was gonna run into uh, that spike right there. Like, that bent uh, piece of uh, gate. Like, she would accidentally impale herself. But uh, they changed it to where Michael kills her in this version. And this is definitely the better version, actually. Like I said, some of the reshoots did did make the film better, but some didn't. Yeah, she took too long. I could have made it through there, but I would have been a lot faster about it. Ah, poor Donna. Ouch. I will admit, that's a good kill. It's like I said, originally she was going to accidentally impale herself from uh, the front. But uh, like I said, luckily um, they, during the reshoots they changed it. Because this is definitely the better death. Same thing with the music, like uh, cinematography right there is all good. Poor Donna. Well, he's actually right, but... <laughs> oh yeah, these guys... <laughs> She's getting stoned. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> yeah, Sarah is definitely the best character in the film after uh, Laurie Strode. No, she's not the strongest final girl, but granted, she's not given much to work with, but I do like her. Yeah, I think that's Michael Myers. I don't think that's Rudy dressed as Michael Myers. 
That's a creepy shot, though. At least I think it's him. I could be wrong. Oh, well, actually, you know, th um, thinking about it, it probably is not because um, they immediately go back downstairs. Michael would not have had time to climb the stairs and hide. Yeah, it probably was Rudy, because I don't... Well, maybe Michael could go upstairs fast enough if he's quick enough about it. I don't know. I mean, unless he slipped by. I mean, okay, I guess he could have slipped by them after they came down, but... <laughs> yeah, originally uh, the cameras were supposed to go out because uh, Nora's blood is uh, causing the controls to fry or something. That's what they showed in the work print. got a point there. I mean, at least I'll say one thing, the character's at least honest. <laughs> that probably was Michael. He probably would have had just enough time to slip by, but it would have been close. They're dead. Yeah, um... If you look in the trailers, uh, Jen was originally... Uh, Michael was going to smash through a wall and try and grab her. It was supposed to be an extended sequence of the chase after she finds Bill's body. I'm not 100% sure why they cut it out. Ah, yeah, he's there, but... <laughs> Now I wonder if those two had made it out, would they have like uh, gone somewhere and had some drinks and maybe something happened? <laughs> I mean, Bill got her back, but he had to be dead to do it. <laughs> she does look freaked out there. Ah, oh, there's Michael. Yeah, you know, you think they would know that's definitely not Freddy, because there's no way he could get upstairs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only time we've seen an on-screen decapitation from Michael. Like, he decapitated other victims before, but that's like the first time we saw it. Nope. They're just like, oh shit. <laughs> That's a good shot of Michael coming down the stairs. It's like, oh crap. Uh-oh. I gotta say, it's like, the other guys, they should have done something to help him, you know, throw something at Michael? I don't know. I mean, granted, Michael killed him pretty quick. I 
I will say though that is a good kill. Yeah, the mask looks weird right there. It's got like some ice shadow or something. Oh crap. Yeah, you know, I gotta give it to Freddy, you know, like he steps up to save Sarah. I kind of wish uh, Rudy and Sarah had made it out of the film, but I get it, you know. Rudy's gotta die. You know, there can only be one survivor. <laughs> nice one! <laughs> That would burn. <laughs> it's like that would sting. Ah, going for that back door was a mistake, man. Ouch. Uh oh. Damn. <laughs> it's like poor Freddy. Or no, not Freddy. Oh my god, poor Rudy. What the heck am I saying? <laughs> and up oh, there's the big knife. Yeah, he was done. I will say, though, that is a good kill. Yeah, it's a like, good thing she remembered to, like, contact Decker. Decker. It's like now they're like suspecting there might be something wrong. <laughs> yeah, I like the music right here. Really good stuff. That's creepy. Oops. You better hurry. You know, I don't know, I might have taken a chance and said, screw it. Granted, though, knowing my luck, I would have broke my legs on the way down. It would have been, like, an easy target for Michael. Michael's like, ah. Ouch.
Yeah, I'm surprised Michael didn't go after her in the attic. But at the same time, all she would have had to do is go back out the window, so... I could see why Michael was just like, I'll wait this out. Hallway. <laughs> and she's like, wait, what? <laughs> Next to a chest. <laughs> Kind of you know, like you're trying to stay quiet, it's like, Yes, you do. Yeah, you know, it's like Michael's clever, you know, he was just waiting. <laughs> right, they knew exactly where they would go, so... <laughs> nice one, Michael. Yeah, they made a mistake here, um... It's like, uh, okay, hang on. Right after Sarah grabs the ca oh yeah, Sarah's grabbing the camera, but... When, um, Freddy does his kung fu stuff against Michael, it's like, it's funny, but... It makes Michael look stupid, you know, it's like, it makes him look weak. It's like, it might be funny, but I definitely would've cut this out. It's like, they made the biggest mistake in this film is making fun of Michael. You don't do that. Nice one, Sarah. Ouch. I mean, yeah, I would take out all the stuff with the Kung Fu. Yeah, the mask looks weird there, too. Like, there's definitely some editing I would do to this to make it better. Because, like, anything that makes fun of Michael, I would take out. Though, that's a good shot with Michael hanging there. Yep. It's like you should have made sure. <laughs> uh oh. They're just like, damn it. Yeah, um, in the original version, um, they were actually going to go outside and uh, Michael would uh, drop her on the roof and uh, tackle uh, Freddy and start choking him. And Sarah would um, hit Michael with a 2x4 and then Michael would chase him back into the house and you don't know if Freddy's dead or not. But uh, here they've changed it to where obviously Michael's going to appear in a second and uh, stab Freddy. But you're going to see an insert of Michael uh, coming in from outside, like uh, they made an editing goof. Surprise! Ouch. Yeah, you see that? That's an outside edit. Like, uh, they made a mistake. Ha! 
Hang on, poor Sarah. Now that's an intense scene. So it's too bad she missed the uh, doors to lead outside. Like, there was a way out, but I guess she didn't see it. But granted, in a panic, yeah, you could easily miss it. And fortunately, Michael heard her. <laughs> it's like, Michael's like, ah, that's where you went. And of course, uh, Sarah sees poor Donna. It's like, oh crap. Uh oh. That's a good shot. It's like, climb, Sarah. Climb. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Ouch. Nice one. And Michael's like, go ahead. It's like, I'll be right there. Ugh. Sarah's like, what? It's like, you? And poor Nora. I know, it's like Michael not only hanged her, but he also gutted her, I guess. It's like, <laughs> it's like double whammy. Yeah, that didn't take long. Yeah, I'm originally in the work print. Um, when Michael comes in, he was gonna uh, stab some wires, and it gets all tangled up and starts getting electrocuted. Sarah was actually never gonna do anything, uh, but she was gonna toss, I think, an electrical cable at him. I haven't seen the work print in a little bit, but like uh, that's right, because uh, originally um, Freddy's not gonna actually save Sarah. It was actually gonna be Deckard. He's actually in the work print. He'd be already on the way. I do like this, though. Like, I like seeing Sarah fight back with the uh, chainsaw. Uh-oh. I, I like this reshoot. This actually makes the scene stronger. But one thing I would have changed... Um, just wait a second. I'll wait till it happens. Okay. From this point, what you could have done was... Um, they could have used the original ending where Michael gets tangled up in the wires. And have Deckard save Sarah instead of uh, Freddy. I think it would have made the ending better because... Having Freddy be the hero, it's like... Really? Like, I admit, if I was to redo the ending, I would do a hybrid of uh, the reshoots and the original ending. Because, like I said, in the original ending, Deckard's actually already on his way to the Myers house. And he'd uh, come in through the door and save her, but in this version, um... Michael's not tangled up in the wires, and he's about to try and kill Sarah, but then uh, Freddy comes to the rescue. That's a funny line, but I would get rid of it. Oh, 
Also, this stuff right here with the, uh, like, more Kung Fu stuff or whatever, I would get rid of it, or martial arts stuff. Like, I would just cut to that part where Michael grabs it. Like, I think it was a mistake making Freddy, like, uh, be the ultimate hero. Because, again, like, they insult Michael by doing some of these scenes, and it's not a good thing. And then, of course, this scene. It's like, you hear Michael, he's like, oh! It's like, really? <laughs> Yeah, I would have cut all that out. It's funny, but it insults Michael, so... Again, that's funny, but... Yeah, I would never use any of that. It's like, you don't want to insult Michael, because then you're just hurting the film. Like, honestly, like, I should do a hybrid um, edit of the original ending and uh, the, the ending they went with in the theatrical cut so you guys can see what I'm talking about. My ending would be better. And there's, there's like four or five different endings to this. You got the original ending, you got uh, the, the CSI ending, which actually wasn't bad, but that still has a lot of the Freddy stuff in it. Um, you also have the ending where uh, Sarah slams the axe in Michael's uh, face when he's trying to choke Freddy. Um, like I said, there's a lot of different endings. Like I said, I heard they were ch changing the script on Rick Rosenthal like every five minutes. Good for you, Deckard. Yep. I mean, I don't hate the character of Freddy, but like I said, I would cut out all the scenes where he, like, uh, you know, he makes Michael look weak or insults Michael. I mean, it's funny stuff, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, these guys are keeping a close eye. <laughs> I don't blame her for wanting to make sure he's dead. <laughs> you gotta wish he didn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're sending they're going for more humor a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, huh? And of course, she's the only one in there. It's like, I mean, it's not a bad ending. It's just, I think the original ending was better in terms of respect to the series, respect to Michael. I don't necessarily have a problem with this part. I think in some ways the CSI ending was more chilling. It's 
It's like you really should have waited until um you had somebody else there with you. It's like wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Surprise! Okay, so that was Halloween Resurrection. Honestly, I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say. Like, I say it's better than uh, The Curse of Michael Myers, and it's easily better than Rob Zombie's H2. I can at least have fun with Resurrection. I will admit, a lot of the characters are one-dimensional, but at the same time, they're at least somewhat likable. Like, the main character does a decent job. Uh, I, I wish he was given more to do, but I do like the main character. Um, this musical score, like, the score in the film is really good. I do like it. It's definitely one of the better scores. I think, um... Ah. Uh, I think, uh, the guy playing Michael's Brad Worry, if I remember correctly. I thought he did a good job. Like, he nailed Michael's walk. The mask is a little all over the place. There's points in the film where it actually looks really good. And then there's some points where it looks kind of weird. Okay, the biggest complaint with this film is the entire beginning. The beginning's well shot and all that, but it's an insult to H2O because there's no way that explanation actually could work. Like, I think if you took the entire sequence with Laurie out of the film and just made this a standalone Michael Myers film, it would be better. And I think audiences would like it better. I think that's the big thing. Like, if you completely remove Laurie from the film, she doesn't die, you know, like she won in H2O and you just make this like a standalone. This would be better. I do wish the characters were written better. Like, there's no getting around that. Uh, the cinematography is pretty good. I will say that the kills, um, yeah, there's definitely some good kills. Like, the premise for this film is not a bad idea. It's just, it needed more work. Like, I wish I could see all of the cut footage to see if a better cut could be put together. Because, like I said, I think I could do a better cut of the film. So I'd like to see all of the axe footage. Like I said, the work print doesn't contain everything that's been cut. All around though, like, I still think Resurrection is a lot of fun. I mean, like I said, I wish it just, I wish they had not killed off Warrior at the beginning. That's the major negative. Uh, what do you guys think of Halloween Resurrection? Like, where does it rank for you? Like, uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's the worst thing ever? Like, let me know down in the comments. I mean, I admit, for this, this way to end the original series wasn't the best call, especially because it has the stigma of killing off Rory Strode. Like I said, if this was a standalone, I think everybody would have liked it more, and I think it would have done better. Now, again, this is a product of its time, because this was made during the craze of, like, internet reality shows. But at the same time, you know, I think it's pretty good. Like I said, I still like it. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what else I can say about Halloween Resurrection. If you guys can check out the work print version, I would highly recommend it. It definitely has some interesting changes. I almost wish um, Rick Rosenthal could get his own director's cut just to see if he could do a better version of the film. And honestly, like I said, don't blame Rick Rosenthal for Halloween Resurrection because they kept changing the script on him every five minutes. Like, it sounds like it was a very messy production. And, like, I think he did his best. Like, you know, he tried, but, you know, like... No director can do an amazing job if they only have a, a lukewarm script at best. Like, you know, if they don't have a good script, they can only do so much. But, like I said, in the end, you know, I still like Resurrection. I still think it's a decent film. It's just, obviously, it's not anywhere near, like, H2O's quality or the original 1 and 2 and 4. But, I like it. I think it's a, you know, it's an okay Halloween film and it's fun. But I do agree, if I were to do a new edit of the film, I could make it a lot better. Anyway, uh, this is the end of my commentary for Halloween Resurrection. I will talk to you guys later. See ya.